Now, just a few weeks ago, former international footballer John Hartson revealed he was suffering from testicular cancer, which has now spread to his lungs and brain. He's also admitted that he ignored the early warning signs two years ago, only seeking help when he began suffering from blinding headaches. Well, to help highlight the importance of early detection, I'm joined now by local GP, Dr Binoj Nair. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for coming in today. So, this story with the footballer, of course, John, highlights just how quickly things can progress yeah. if you ignore the warning signs and just don't do anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, testicular cancer, when it comes down to it, isn't one of the most common cancers. It counts for about 0.7 of all cancers. But it is actually the most common cancer in men between 20 and 35. So at that young age, it's the number one cancer to look out for. Uh, and ignoring symptoms is a massive problem because it's also one of the most treatable cancers. So it's one of the ones that if you catch it early, you've got virtually a 98% chance of survival. Which so, is amazing. Which is amazing. Okay. The odds are better for that than virtually any other cancer if you catch it early. So when gents are checking themselves, and how regularly would you say is regular enough? Well, I mean, uh, it depends really. Really, what they sort of suggest is every time you're in the shower, have a little check. But, you know, I think you should be checking at least monthly, uh, at the very least. Um, if you just remember to do it every now and again, mm -hmm. that's enough. OK, and what should gents be looking out for? Um, most common presenting feature for a testicular cancer is a painless lump on mm -hmm. the testicle. But any lump, anything unusual you feel, just go into your GP and get it checked out mm -hmm. because uh, it's no issue for a GP to have a look and see what he thinks. There are, you know, uh, a lot of things that, that aren't testicular cancer, a lot of lumps that aren't, a lot of different painful things that aren't, but it's always best for a GP to be the one who makes that decision. Yeah, so don't presume the worst, but get it checked out but as soon as you feel out. any changes. Absolutely. All right, now we're just running out of time, unfortunately, but just want to get your thoughts on swine flu, because we've just found out that today, and actually Andy mentioned it earlier on in the news, uh, that uh, the number of swine flu cases in Manchester has dropped for the second week running. That's good news. It is good news. Um, difficult to interpret because we're not confirming swine flu anymore. We're just treating people with symptoms. So in that way, it's difficult to know whether there actually is a drop and it's difficult to predict how it's going to go from here. But always good news. OK, so are we expecting the cases to drop down further and further? Are we on the good side of it? Very, very difficult to predict. The government is not expecting things to get better for the foreseeable future. They expected it to get worse into the winter and then start tailing off. But you just can't predict how things are going to go. OK, are you seeing in your own GP surgery lots of people still coming in or do you know that people now know that they've got to contact the National Flu Pandemic Line? I think, to be honest, people are, are contacting the, the Pandemic Flu Line. When the flu line wasn't up, we were probably getting 60, 70 calls a day. Now it's dropped to a handful, really. Um, people are, are getting the message, which is good. Good. OK, well, let's just reiterate that number just in case uh, nobody doesn't know it. It's 0800 1513 513. Dr Binoche, thank you so much My for coming in today.